friends, this is Tina Zink, Serene Stamper in Nova Scotia, Canada, and I have a really fun technique to share with you today. It's called the Modern Grid Technique, and um, I saw this on my friend Beth Norman's blog, and I'll put the link down below, and I just thought this was such a fun technique, and it is. It's addictive. So here's the first one I made. And for this one, I use the Falling for Leaves. This is from our holiday 2018-2019 Stampin' Up! catalog. And I wanted it to be bright, and it is, and I absolutely love it. And I use my Stampin' Blends to color. And then this one's a little bit more subtle, but still um, pretty and vivid. And I use the All the Good Things stamp set for this one. And I actually used my watercolor pencils to color in the grid. So it's a really easy technique. Once you make one of these cards, I promise you, you won't stop. You're gonna come up with more and more ideas, which is just the greatest. So let's get started. So <laughs> I don't actually have a specific design in mind. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna be designing off camera. Why not design on camera and hope for the best? So this is old olive cardstock that I've cut 11 by four and a quarter folded in half. That's our card base. Then I have a piece of basic black and this measures five and a quarter by four. And then I have a piece of whisper white cardstock and this measures three and three quarters by five. So before I actually start with the technique I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do okay here's my trick I don't like to waste cardstock and because this is going to have the whisper white um, cardstock on top of it I can actually cut out the center of this cardstock and use that for a different card so I have my square framelit die and I'm just going to position it right on here and I'm going to run it through the Bake Shop, but I'm not going to go past this bar. Oh, I didn't even realize I grabbed my scallop die. That's alright. Okay, so you can see it's not cut all the way. So then I'm going to flip that around and position it lining up the sides not too close to the top there and again run it through not going past that bar and yes I need new cutting plates they're atrocious but they're very well loved as you can tell I'm not sure if I went all the way enough so I'm gonna go back a little bit and you can use scissors you don't have to use dies this is how you also make a rectangle okay so now you can see that this has been cut out. My Whisper White will go right on top of it. But now I have another piece of basic black that I can use for something else. So that's just a little tip, something I do periodically. Um, I do it for ovals and things too. So um, yeah, it's just a great way to stretch out the paper. Okay, so back to the project. Okay, I have put adhesive behind this black mat and I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the center of my card okay gonna set that aside okay if you remember at the beginning of this video I said I have nothing to sign I really don't so I'm winging it didn't even know what stamp set I'm gonna use because you know I like living on the edge so I've just pulled off the painted glass stamp set and I'm going to use well maybe a few of these images so I'm gonna take this it on my black and because it's the red rubber I'm just going to stamp it with my stays on if it were the clear photopolymer I'd be using my black memento and I'm just stamping it randomly onto my card I'm going to stamp it three times and now I'm going to stamp my butterfly I'd use a smaller block but I have a stamp class tonight and I have a lot of my items already packed up for the evening so that's all right this will work fine I'm gonna stamp the butterfly there and I'm gonna stamp the butterfly um, off the paper a little bit and I've got the butterfly going in different directions so there we go okay so now it's time to color Okay, I'm going to use my aqua painters. I love my aqua painters and they just make it super fast to color. 
to make sure I have water coming out. Yes, I do. All right, so what color will I use first? I'm going to use the pool party. Okay, I'm picking up my pool party. Now I'm going to take my mint macaron. So my old olive is also packed up for tonight's class, so I'm just going to take my block and, and I've got my re-inker, so I'm just going to put a dab, it's quite a bit, oh well, and squeeze out some of that old olive re-inker. So there are my circles and I know I have a lot of green there but I have a lot more cards to make so that will stay wet and I can use it for other cards. Now I want to move on to my butterflies and I think I'm going to use some Coastal Cabana. I'm also going to put some Coastal Cabana in the center of the circles. Pacific point really brighten things up a bit okay and I'm gonna put some of that Pacific point in the center of these circles as well next I'm gonna take some rich razzleberry so I'm going right over top of the pool party which is fine you want to make sure you don't have too much water coming out of your aqua painter when you're doing this as well so just Keep your paper towel handy and just dab it every now and then. Make sure that you take off the excess water. Otherwise, it's hard to control your coloring with the aqua painters. But um, if you have aqua painters and have never used them, I encourage you to try them because they're so much fun. I really, really love them. Okay, so now I'm taking the rich razzleberry and going inside these flowers. it's looking I'm gonna take this old olive ink again clean my aqua painter and dab into it I want the old olive to be a little bit darker for these outside circles and again you could use your markers your stampin blends you could use watercolor pencils um, there's just a different way there's all kinds of different ways that you can use for coloring so just do what you're comfortable with. And then lastly, I'm adding some old olive around the inside of this flower as well. And I just realized I don't have any green in my butterfly and I want some of that old olive green. So I'm just going to add some on the wings. So there's my coloring done. Now it's time to add the grid. So you do need a ruler for this. Okay, so I have my stamp and grid paper here. So I'm just lining this up and it's a little bit warbled from the watercoloring and stuff but that's all right 
So I'm just lining up my ruler with the one inch mark and making sure it lines up across. And I've got my basic black marker and I'm using, whoops, not that tip. There we go, I'm using the journaling side. So, really want to make sure that this is even there it is okay I'm just gonna draw a line and you don't want to go through the images now I'm gonna go up to the two inch mark so moving at the one inch increments You could also use a pencil, make sure you're getting it nice and even before you go on top with the marker. Moving up to three. And four. Sorry, I've got my arm in the camera, don't I? Okay, so there's the first set of lines. So now I'm turning this. And because I have my paper cut at three and three quarters by five, so I've moved it up an eighth of an inch. So again, so I'm up an eighth of an inch down below here. And I'm positioning it again at the one mark, one inch mark. Again, making sure my ruler's lining up with the grid paper. I'm going to add a few doodles. Now you can color in your squares like I've done here on these two cards, but I'm just going to do some doodles. I'm going to do some little dots. And I'm going to do some little stitch marks. Coming along, looking so good. Okay, so I, I could leave it like this. I could add a couple more doodles in the white squares, but I actually think... I'm going to take my pool party and color in some of those squares. So I'm taking some of our black glittered organdy ribbon, which is sensational. Okay, so I've added my snail adhesive to wrap my glittered ribbon. And then this is going to go in the card base. Do this like that. Put 
a little snail underneath just to hold that down. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a bow. My glue dots are on to hold that bow in place. Now it's time to add a sentiment. Okay, I'm taking the Enjoy Life. I want to use the Miss You stamp. Okay, I went and grabbed my Memento ink pad. Ink that up. This is just a scrap piece of Whisper White. Um, I get a lot of scraps, of course, when I'm trimming cardstock, as I'm sure you do, and I just keep them all in a drawer, and then I've got them for quick little banners. Okay, so I'm going to trim that and flag it. Okay, I'm actually going to trim this down just a little hair, just so it's not quite so wide. don't want it to hide all that ribbon so I think I'm gonna have it go on the side so a little bit of snail I'm just gonna bend it a little and a piece of computer paper for the inside and then I will write my message and I have a friend in mind that I'm actually going to pop this in the mail for. And there you go. The modern grid technique. So much fun. The ideas for this are absolutely endless. And on my blog, I'll have another sample where I've used heat embossing for the main images. So let me show you the other cards again. So that's using the watercolor pencils. And this was colored with my Stampin' Blends. Oh my goodness, you guys. I hope you give this technique a try. It is addictive. Very fun. And I really enjoyed making today's card, um, especially on the fly, not knowing how my design was going to be, not even knowing what stamp set or colors I was going to use, and it turned out really nice. Oh, I just had a thought. Dement um, diamonds, you guys. we got to put some diamonds on there. Yes, sir. Cannot forget the bling. Oops. There. Now we got some bling. Okay. Now I can sleep tonight. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Happy stamping.